Greetings, Marsh here, and welcome to episode 140 of my modded Vectorio playthrough. In this episode, we are going to build a giant aquarium, which is a step we need to do in order to start making modules. Enjoy. So it's going to be basically 50 of these. Since it doesn't need to be logistically close, we might want to put it far away. Now, putting it closer would be better for pollution. Anywhere we put it, the pollution's basically going to be dispersed. So we probably won't get much of that benefit. Instead, we probably would just want to put it out as far away as we can get away with. Because there's going to be more to this setup. We're going to need the 80 chemical plants, which aren't going to take up that much space. And the 12 farms, which also won't take up that much space. But we do need to remember that we have to place these out here as well. So in that sense, it probably doesn't matter too much. We'll just uh, keep covering patches. And sooner or later... We'll have to uh, start moving machines, but that's a pretty big stereotype patch, but that's pretty big too. This area right here looks fairly large and we can put a lot of machines. And even though it's going to be a long drive, we probably want to make use of the crawler here because of the sheer number of things that are going to be built. One other thing we can do is make this giant collection of fish disappear. Because we can chop them up and turn them into meat, which will improve the throughput for the fish breeding, at least until we run out. So we'll want to set up that priority. While everything is building, this might be a good opportunity to run around and play some concrete. Since we have a surplus of stone and silicon now, hmm. Silicon isn't running here. It uh, hiccuped. Didn't pick up all of the silicon that it needed. Well, unfortunately, I don't have any inserters on hand to fix that. Probably just need some faster inserters. But for now, this should restart the process. That's interesting. So it wasn't quite enough inserters in the end. Since that's not very much concrete anymore... Let's load it into a warehouse. With concrete is less than, let's say, 100,000. Well, we have run out of silicon again. So we're uh, pounding it in there as best we can. That might, uh, it might explain why we're starting to build silicon. Because we weren't actually using it anymore. Whoops. But we're using it now, so let's use some stack inserters here to hopefully not run out of resources again. Actually, I wonder if it was that low power event that made it so these inserters couldn't reach, because the belts were moving at the same speed, but the inserters were moving too slow. So this might fix it right now, but it won't later. So, we need to have some way of looping the resources back. And we need to set a priority where silicon has to be greater than, let's say, 100, since that set point is 200. To make sure this doesn't run into any problems anymore. Okay, I think we have everything we need. That's a large inventory of items, but let's go. Now we have a long, lonely drive to get up there. But at least once this crawler is up there, we won't have to drive it up there again. As long as we don't drive it back. So knowing that, let's take the car so we can drive back with it. Probably need to build a road up here too to make it a little easier to traverse. Might as well grab the puffer. Let's see, where did we want to start building? How about like starting in this corner right here so we're just barely not blocking the stereotype and we won't block the natural gas. So it'll be something like this. And who knows how much space we'll need. Let's just grab a bunch of it. 
And let's see, let's move this. Oh, let's go to the right. I don't think it really matters too much. Let's build some of this together and see exactly what we're dealing with here. Let's build it down a few times. See how big it ends up being. Okay, we've made some pretty good progress. Haven't directly blocked anything quite yet. And we've got about a hundred fish tanks left to go. So let's start expanding it to the right and make it more square. Okay, we're looking pretty close to done here. At least for all of these aquariums. But uh, I kind of want to get a radar here. So we can actually see what's going on. And it looks like the closest power is probably just down and to the right. So I want to count how many... Uh, Exactly how many aquariums we have. Now that we're going to be placing some radars, we can do a Radar 3. And it has an even larger view area. So by comparison, that's Radar 2. And then Radar 3, so we can see a lot more. I'll probably move that later. But for now, I kind of want to check all this out here. So what do we got? 384. And we needed 367. So it looks like we can remove one line. Okay, so do we have at least 367? Yep, we have 368. So there we go. There's the aquarium farm. At least just the part that's uh, very large. From here, we have to get the supplies in there. We've got to get the nutrient pulp from farms. And we got to get this water in here from chemical plants. Okay, let's bring all this together. Well, it's a shame the power poles don't reach. But let's connect the output which is the polluted fish water. And we need to get the other materials, such as the pulp and the artificial fish water as well. That one's a little more zigzaggy, but it fits. And looks like we need to get these power poles in here. Let's just plop them like this so everything is consistent. Everything seems more or less connected. So that's the fish tanks for the fish petting, which is basically there to get the polluted fish water. Let's take care of some more tree cutting here. Because now we need to do the breeding, which is 24 and a half. So 25. And it's basically the same setup. So I guess we'll grab all of this and then figure out exactly how to do it in a bit here. Let's get this lined up with the other setup. Doesn't have to be lined up, but we might as well. And let's put it out here. So we needed 25 machines and this is 28. But good enough. It's nice and symmetrical. Alright, the output, which is fish, will go to the left. And the input will go to the right. Then we'll need a central repository of fish. Probably something like this. Let's see. I don't have any of the warehouses with me, but we can kind of pretend that it would go right here. And then we need to have our two butcheries making raw meat to feed the fish. <laughs> I'm sure this won't cause any issues at all. Okay, since we need two, we can kind of make this somewhat symmetrical. Where we have an output of fish which comes up here. And goes in. Then we'll put this right here. Doesn't require a recipe, it just chops up fish. So we'll have a yellow inserter going in. 
And a yellow inserter going out. And that should basically be everything that we need. I'll just put all these chests here to mark where the warehouse would be. So that will take care of the fish breeding. So now we need to actually deliver this fish. It looks like the input belt is this guy right here. What kind of quantities of fish are we working with here? Quite a bit. Basically two red belts. Although, based on the positioning, we could probably send one belt going up and then one going down. And then we also need to take all of that fish that we've produced and send it back in. Looks like we're just about to run out of belts here. But once we get those belts, that'll basically be taken care of. Let's see. Let's do one more butchery. Which we'll put right here. We still need some belts, but this will be the take care of all of the extra fish we have butchery. Let's do a strong box for this. And basically we put in all the fish we don't need. So factorian fish. And the jellyfish. You can see it's uh, chop, chop, chopping away. We'll need some more belts for that to fill up. And we also need to put the, the Levac fish in here, but we kind of can do that already. See, we need to do the breeder tanks first, but uh, let's wait for a second. Let's just put the fish right there. We'll take care of that when we uh, go back to the base. So we're going to need that warehouse, some belts, yada, yada, yada. So since I don't want to drive this vehicle back, Let's grab a bunch of stuff to take back with us to help clear out the inventory here. Looking good. Can't go that way. Definitely need to build a road going up here. I kind of don't feel like it right now. How come this thing is still going? Okay, it's just storing lots of raw meat. That makes sense. But uh, I do plan on building a road coming up here and we might actually need a road we're going to use drones for stuff, but since I don't know exactly where the best place for that road will be, let's do that later. Plus, the car by itself isn't that slow. It's when it's driving over water that it really slows down. That said, <laughs> I sure thought we'd get there by now. This uh, feels like it's really far away. Maybe we need to build that road after all. Okay. Let's, uh... Grab some pavement while we're up there. One other thing we can do. A little bit of research, but... Let's do driver assistance systems from Pavement Drive Assist. Basically, it's cruise control for your car. So we'll research that. And, um... Uh, there's some important settings, which actually I don't think are set correctly. Luckily, they're map settings, so we can change them. But basically what it does is it looks at the various floors and gives it a rating. And the higher the rating, the priority it will give. So let's say you had an asphalt road over a refined concrete road. The car will try to stay on asphalt because that's 1.5, which is higher than 1.25. However, if you had refined concrete road with pavement around it, it would get all confused because it's being pushed away from the road. So the important thing to note is that we're using basically drone path for our roads, and that counts as a stone path. And it's actually specifically set like that in the mod. So the mod is compatible. It's just, it doesn't rank it very high. So 0.6 is too low. So we should probably set it to 1.6, which will make it the highest rated thing on here. So the car will actually use it as a path. And usually I do the scan rate as quickly as possible. So every tick, which should help it stay on the road. The keys to activate it are I and O. And unfortunately those are set up with Hellmod. That was for logistics network. 
have to like click through all these keys to find out some that you can use. For now, I'll put them on the uh, buttons down here and worry about figuring out which key to use later. So there's two things it can do. The driving assistant, which keeps it on the road, and cruise control, which sets it to a certain speed, if that's what you want it to do. Of course, we want to get there very fast, so we don't care about the speed. We'll have to give it a shot here. So we'll turn off snapping. Turn on the driving assistant. And see how it's searching for the road. But then when it finds it, it's good. And it tries to stay on as much as possible. I have noticed that sometimes it gets confused if you have a road that's at a 90 degree angle with no curve here. Yeah. See how it's, uh... It doesn't seem to recognize that that's a turn. But you put a tiny little nub in there. And then it figures it out. So we'll probably need to double check to make sure there's no hard angles on any parts of the road here. I don't know how much road to get, but let's just grab a ton of it. We'll go slow here to begin with, make sure that it turns properly. You'll definitely need a trial and error to figure out how fast you can safely drive on whatever road you built. I should be able to go full speed now. And now it will follow it without having to pay attention. And depending on how fast you go, and the size of the road, you may or may not stay on the road at all times. So it makes that turn, but... Just be careful. We need to do a road, and we have a couple of choices. Do we drive straight up here? Or at an angle from over there? Kind of want to go straight up. Well, we got some of the way there. <laughs> Guess we needed even more road. Well, that'll help to finish the rest of it later. And now the car drives normally now that we're on the grass again. Because there's nothing for it to compare to. Let's get that storehouse in there. And also this meat. So this can go up. And go the long way. That way he gets priority. And let's set this to the correct side of the belt. And we'll let that fill up. For now, let's turn off the output of this. And now we need to set the input based on how much fish we want to keep on hand. Honestly, it's not that important. So let's just say a stack. 200. So there has to be less than 200 fish in here for this to run. Actually, I will pick up the inserters from those butcheries just so we can see this whole thing with fish and not have it uh, chop them all up. And then the output here. Let's say the fish have to be greater than 100. So we don't want to give it the chance to run out. And there's 15 in there. So we have just enough to seed this, so we can actually connect that again. And we'll let that butchery go to fill all this up. And since we're making another trip down, let's grab a bunch more stuff. Let's use our road, see how much faster this goes. Pretty good so far. Let's try it going fairly quickly. 
around these turns. Let's see if it crashes into anything. Seems to be doing pretty good so far. Alright, let's go back and let's try full speed. See how much of a disaster this is. Hey, it made it. Of course, we weren't quite at full speed, but... Seems to be fairly accurate. Oh yeah, we still haven't fixed uh, these items right here. To try to remember that uh, next time. Well, let's see, seed extractor is finished. We have four or five right there. Three there, and two there. We did find some new gardens. Some swamp gardens, so we'll put those in there. We probably also want another seed extractor. Put in here. Basically, just for manual use. So we can convert anything we found back to the seeds. And we might as well have a storage chest for any materials that we couldn't convert to seeds. And we'll let that run. We can try to use the cruise control here seems to work. You'll still have to turn, but otherwise that'll hold W for you if you don't feel like holding W. I'm fine with the W. It goes faster. <laughs> That's good enough for now, since we don't know where this road's going to go. If anywhere, that might be all we need. That thing is still working on the meat. Might be able to give it a bit of a head start by loading some fish. And these other machines as well. But we are dealing with a lot of fluids here. So it kind of makes sense that somewhere in the middle that we have a buffer tank in here. So it could absorb some of the fluids. Uh-oh, some biters. Let's test out the new weapon upgrades. Pretty good. Okay. There's some buffer tanks for the three fluid types. And the meat is starting to catch up. But I wonder how full this thing's going to get with meat before it stops running. It might basically fill up all the way. If that's the case, we probably should run through all of this extra fish first. That covers all the fish parts, so now we need to work with these fluids. We need to get nutrient pulp and artificial fish water in here. Well, the fish water is probably going to be easier, especially since we need mud for the farms. So we need our 81 chemical plants and then the saline water, which we can send up here. Based on this quantity, we might want to do a train. I don't know if we have any convenient places to pick up saline water from. We could uh, expand this even further and have a saline water pickup kind of over here on the corner. Although there might not be enough room to do this at an angle one more time. There is this right here. It's right next to rails. And it's got the clarifiers there, so you know it deals with a lot of saline water. Just because that's uh, several drones a second. That's too much. As far as the other resources, the pulp will be nearby, so we can just have a pipe. And then the polluted fish water, we can have a pipe going into making those as crystals, so we don't need to send those anywhere. So we'll be able to use up our factory saline water. And then we have all of these washing plants for if that saline water is not enough. We had a setting we needed to update. Why isn't this running? I see, it's only filling up to 400. Let's say if it's less than 
500. Refill that up. So that should be running now. Looks like we have a bunch of washing plant ones that were never replaced. But that's alright, we just kind of leave them there for now. So what is the set point for when this starts to generate saline water? 4,000, or 20%. So when we have our train, we don't want to drain it below 20%, otherwise this is going to be filling it up. And it's probably better off making the saline water where we need it, rather than all the way down here. So we should have our 100 chemical plants, which we do. See if I remembered everything, <laughs> and we go back there. But at least we have autopilot now. Whew, I didn't trust going around that turn at full speed. Yeah, that didn't work. And that's the end of this episode. On the next one, we're going to build up the rest of the components for the aquarium, and then start breeding some fish. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.